welcome back. So we are starting the, I'm starting that kind of that next stage. I've done some research. I've got my books are kind of off to the side, which you can't see yet. Um, and I've got some additional supplies that I want to come talk to you through because sometimes working out a design, especially when something is found in nature, it's on a rock somewhere. Um, and you want to play with scale like how big do I want it to be do I want to play with one size one section make it bigger make it smaller and that's kind of where that artistic license gets to come in and so I'm going to share with you some of the things that I do to make that happen so one of the first things that I've got is here let me grab a better one is I have on just regular um, Printmaking. Now, I like printmaking paper um, versus just straight up watercolor paper. This is um, Arches printmaking paper. And I've drawn, and I know it's kind of hard to see um, because of, just because of the lighting is going to wash it out. I've got a circle drawn in pencil on this. And this is um, a four inch diameter. So this kind of gives me an idea in terms of scale. Um, I can kind of plan and sketch out things here in a circular fashion. And so to show you that, I've taken some inspiration from, I'm gonna show you the um, curb stone that has the solar year. So I'm gonna bring that here, I'm gonna show you that. And based on some of the images and symbols, I've created kind of this abstract version, right? It's not precise, it does. It just contains some of the elements, but not all of them. And I thought, well, okay, that's all right, but it makes me think of science class um, and mitochondria and what looks like it could be inside of a cell. And so I was like, well, maybe not so much. So I took, tracing paper is a great thing to have on hand, so I took some tracing paper and I'm using the author's sketch of the actual curb stone to create an image that I can now take a picture of so I can capture this sketch. It's not precise in any way. I can capture this sketch, blow it up and project it onto my actual round canvas and then play with it a little bit see what I want to make larger, smaller, maybe adjust the location a little bit so that it's based on the curb stone, if that makes sense. And so um, I've already sketched that one out. I've already drawn like traced to that one. So that's a technique that I'll use. And this is also really handy when, for example, in one of the books, okay, so let me, ah, let me grab my other book. I'm about to do this a similar process. I've seen this curb stone. This is the one that the New Grange entrance stone. It's not a curb stone. Here, let me get that to show up there for you. Um, it's amazing. Oh my gosh, it is so amazing to be able to see that. Um, so I'm going to trace this um, and then use that to create an image because I want to, I really want to focus on this section right here but I also want to capture some of this. I can't decide if I want some of this triangular piece in. It might be kind of nice to have this and have kind of like this entrance and this marker here um, in to bring that in. So I have that. So I'm kind of excited by that. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is that when I said that it get, lets me be able to sketch out ideas. So this is, again, this is kind of pale. Um, the lighting is actually really, really good, but it's kind of washing this out. Um, hold just one second. Let me see if I turn off one of my lights as I stub my toe and see if that's going to make this appear a little bit better. Uh, a little bit, not too much though. Um, it's one of the disadvantages I work in pencil when I'm sketching things out so that mm, I can erase it. But that means it doesn't show up the best. Okay, that's only sort of better here. Let me try not to stub my toe this time. Um, as I said, my studio, I'm still in the process of cleaning some stuff up. 
um, that, that's nice kind of remove some of the shadows but um, I will sketch things out I mentioned that one of the things that I wanted to do was some standing stones so I went online I did some research um, and I mentioned that I have a uh, landscape book and here, I'm gonna pull this out and underneath where's my where's my page marker there it is so I've got I know it's upside down guys sorry here hold on um, that's the one thing that oi, pardon me as I whack into the camera um, this way you can kind of get a good idea of seeing that um, this is a set of standing stones that are in Ireland so I kind of use this idea that some are small some are tall some, you know, there's often um, a stone in the middle, but they don't always have that. Um, so I researched a bunch of them. Uh, I went looking for my photographs and I couldn't find my actual photographs. So it was kind of sad. So that reminds me then, let me turn this then the way that you're gonna be able to see it. Uh, huh, so it's not upside down. So there you go. So as you can see, I have some that are smaller, taller, um, off to the side. Um, so that I can kind of represent that and then I've drawn a horizon line here so that I can do this is ground and this is sky okay um, so it's a sketch but that's part of that process I may have to find another place to stick this camera so that you can actually see things right side up instead of upside down um, all right I want to show you Da, da, da. Let me dig through here for just a second because I did find, here we go. All right, so one of the things that um, is so fascinating with this is mazes. And I'm probably going to have like an entire video just talking about a maze versus a labyrinth. Um, a lot of times people equate them to be the same thing, but they are not. Um, and so this one has, this has multiple multiple entrances okay but as you follow you can kind of you can follow it here and then up oh, this one is more of a labyrinth okay so this one is a labyrinth versus a maze so you're probably thinking to yourself okay all right smarty pants what's the difference between a maze and a labyrinth so as you can see when I'm tracing my finger through this, it's gone from one quadrant to the next, to the next, to the next. Now, this is not a, tra this is, um, not a traditional labyrinth because a traditional labyrinth will, at the end, it will bring you in to the center just one time. And, um, it's funny because this book talks about mazes and it refers to this pavement maze um, at Chartres Cathedral. Eh, it's a labyrinth, not a maze. Um, a labyrinth goes through each quadrant and will take you into a center or central point. Um, that's a whole other story. Like that's a great um, visual finger meditation that you can do. Um, they're amazing. I love being able to do those. But this, something that this design like this that's taken from, so these are examples that are taken from the Book of Kells. So what I want you to see is here, this author has referenced, like this is a center medallion from the, from the Book of Kells where they've reproduced it. And I have, in one of the books that I have from the Book of Kells, it actually has this. But the image that I have available is really tiny is really really small so something like this is going to allow me to capture that image and be able to bring it up I'm not necessarily a fan of I don't particularly like this particular maze I found a better one within the book of Kells that I liked um, that I want to incorporate and um, and of course I did not mark it so I can show it to you um, but books like this, um, the author has created a sketch based on um, an example from one of the portfolio folio pages um, from the Book of Kells. 
and so for example like here's one like this is one that I'm looking at that I would like to reproduce and I'm gonna move this down so bear with my camera usage here because it's gonna require here we go this is this is what I was thinking of when I saw the shamrock I don't know if you can see this is very difficult to see just because of the the ink in here as well as faded this is a piece of knot work that brings in and it has a shape it is a three okay a three prong shape but they almost are shaped like a shamrock leaf and so I'm going to come back in and even though it's got like they've ended it so it's um, Oh, uh, some might call this, um, this could be a dragon. Um, okay, hold on. Hold, hold on just a second. Oh. Okay. This is potentially their variation. It is. It is the exact same. I knew this looked familiar. <laughs> okay. So, this author has taken that image and made it clear okay so they define it so I'm gonna pull this back out a little bit so they've clearly defined and delineated so this is um, interlaced dragons and is this folio number 29 it is huh, it's folio number 29 awesome so um, I was planning on sketching the smaller one but this author has made that image much clearer and they've gone in and gotten some of the smaller, they were able to retrieve some of the smaller details. Now, many of t many times, um, somewhere I have one of these, um, you can get digital versions of these where you can enlarge the image so that it's easier for you to see and for you to be able to um, duplicate in some way. And so, that's one of the reasons why I like being able to find something like this where they've done, honestly, they've done some of the work for me um, because I now don't have to translate this. Now, one of the things that I don't necessarily like about this one is that this is a really sharp point here. Um, I think that one in the book is a little bit more curved. Um, but some of them are a little sharper and at the point so they've kind of they've taken what it was an artist drawing something out by hand and having sketched out by hand and using more precise tools that we have today being able to generate a more precise version uh, so I do um, I do like this it's like I know I've seen that but that's one of the reasons why I have the tracing paper is so that I can go in and trace. Now, I'm gonna show you another example because this is where doing some of the research on some of these pieces gets to be a little tricky because there are ideas that I have that I want to do, but I know I have seen them before. I know I've seen them somewhere else. Hold on, I just knocked over my water, um, unfortunately. I don't have anything on this side of my my table other than my stuff but my phone so it's not in the way it's awesome um, all right sorry for that distraction but I have so I found this this is a book now here's the thing these are all copyrighted okay and as an artist one, I don't want to take something from somebody. That's just rude. They worked hard for this. They created it. Now, and this is an example of that. I have been searching and searching and searching for a circular incised cross that's just a basic, very simple knot work design. And so this person has one here. I like this, I like the not, I like the just very simple knot work. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take, but I'm gonna modify this. So I, I can see what they've done and they've done these darker parts in the middle. I'm not gonna be doing any of that. 
I want just this and I want to form it. They've got an interior line here. I don't want that. I want a nice, big, fat, solid cross line. And if I wanted to, I may, if I want something smaller, I may just go in and just follow this smaller line in here so that I get a smaller, narrower band instead of a, instead of a larger band. Um, and I may actually do that because then when I enlarge this, it's going to be different. But then I'm going to be able to come back in and add additional design work inside these other spaces. So what I'm capturing is the knot work component, but I'm going to remove, right? I'm not going to capture the entirety because that, that's stealing. I'm going to do that. Um, but I can come in and I can lift just this basic knot work pattern. Now, if I really, really wanted to, I could lay this out and I could sketch it out and do the knot work myself. It's going to look just like this. Okay, that's the hard part here, especially when some of the knot work designs and especially with some of the things that when I'm going to pull it straight from um, one of the books. So that's one of the things that I want you to be mindful of when you're working is if you are, if one of the references that you're looking at, like some of the things that I'm looking at are, are um, replicas, right? So here, here's a replica of the Book of Doro. I'm going to take just this one center medallion. I haven't decided yet if I want to try to do like all four or do like one of these. So it's a larger piece, um, but I'm going to sketch those out. So I'm going to capture this. That's why you have that sketch paper so that I can kind of go over it and capture the essence of that design. I'm going to come in and capture just this smaller one. And then I'm probably going to also come in and capture this larger one because it's slightly different. And um, it, it's, it has four inside it, which I don't always see that for. A lot of things within, especially the Book of Kells, and then even the Book of Duro, you'll see things captured in sets of threes, three spirals, right? Here's a center spiral with three around it. Um, and that is because this always tends to tie back to the idea of um, in Christianity, the Holy Trinity, things occur in threes. Um, that's also why one of the reasons why that shamrock that I saw in the book of Kells, it only has three leaves. It doesn't have four. Um, but today in modern times, we associate that four leafed clover with a sense of good luck. And I want to bring in that kind of a modern twist and not just look at what I would typically find when I go to pick up a, pe a shamrock or a piece of clover. It's going to be three leaves. Um, because the other thing here is that, I don't know if you can see here, because this is so hard to see. I'm going to see if I can drill way down here. Can you see how there, there's some very simple knot work right here? Um, I may look at capturing some of that as well, but it has that four design and not necessarily looking to do a lot of that. So, uh, I hope that that you find this helpful because sometimes when this isn't necessarily a part that an artist share, like we find inspiration and ideas from anywhere. Like this was a fantastic place for me to come and see some different knot work and like they've gone in and they've patterned it and they've done their thing. Um, you can find coloring books now um, and so I love that there's all this kind of wealth of resource to give you some ideas and some inspiration um, and that I can then also capitalize and use by taking parts of it. Um, parts that I like, that leave parts that I don't like behind. Um, here was another um, cross, um, but again, I only, um, like, I don't like some of it. I, I only want the, like, I would only want the knot work design out of the center. But I like this one better. It's simpler. I like some, sometimes simpler is better. Um, and so, 
pieces like that, that's really important to see um, and recognize that in, in the art world, you never, ever want to take somebody's idea. This is their idea. They've worked hard on it. They have developed it. They've done what they need to do with it. Um, you don't want to ever lift that and claim it as your own. Okay. Um, that's that well, one that goes against copyright. Um, but you can find inspiration anywhere. I want to show you. Here's another design here. Oh, here. Sorry, I forget that it's upside down for you. Um, let me get that to be clear. There you go. So can you see the knot work on that? And I can, I know it's having a hard time. Um, I can take that and trace over this design from um, the standing stone and see about making adjustments here and around here and around here so that it's more curved, okay? Um, and then that way I also have the ability to reference where it came from, okay? Which is also very, very nice to be able to do is to indicate where your design idea came from. Um, so I hope that this helps you kind of see um, some of the sketching part, um, where some of these ideas come from as I reallocate my, my books here so I can see where I was at. Um, oh, you know what? I just looked, I opened up my Book of Kells page and it is a four leaf clover. Here, let me get that in there. It is a four leaf clover. I thought it was just three. Okay, well, um, yeah, so I'm wanting to look at a four leaf clover and here's another little one. Let's see if you can, I can get the camera to zone in on that. So I think that's pretty cool that they put in these little kind of clover designs uh, in multiple places. So I kind of li I like that. Um, and as a result of doing all of this, I've been able to generate a number of ideas that I want to incorporate. Um, they even have Okay, so I saw this. So this was really nifty. I'm gonna turn this page upside down. So this is a design page. So the artist was sketching out different ideas for different things in the, um, one of the manuscripts that they were creating. But look at that pattern. <gasps> I think that is just so beautiful, so delicate, and it can be adjusted to be in the round. Um, so I don't know about that being a Celtic symbol, but I really think that's really pretty. So that's one of the other portions about doing this is that in the research, I have to make sure that I'm actually sticking to what I want to do and I get sidetracked by something that I think would make a stunning piece of art. Um, oh my gosh, somebody could do like either they could take that and incorporate it and make an adjustment to make it a repetitive pattern um, so that it is on paper, a wallpaper, fabric, and that would be just beautiful. But as you can see, I've gone through and I've tagged. So this is from the Lindisfarne. Um, this is from the book, a book about the Lindisfarne Gospels. Y'all, this is an incredible um, resource because it talks about the time, the society, um, as well as how it was done. Um, it is an incredible um, book. And, ah, here we go. This is the one that had the maze in it. So this is from... Um, the Lindisfarne Gospels, and I had not seen anybody here. Let me see how well I can get that up there. Uh, it's a, This is a maze pattern on the inside, okay? And a maze is typically something that you go into, and it's got so many twists and turns that you're not 100% sure how to get out. You know you can get out. Um, there is a way to get out, um, but it tends to not be something that is done in quadrants um, as a labyrinth is. But that is a whole nother video. Um, I could 
I could quite literally talk about labyrinth work all the time. Um, so let's talk for just a little bit more about this piece. So having something where you can sketch things out, test ideas, this is a way for me to test something out prior to putting it on my actual canvas. If it's something that I'm sketching, if it's a design that I'm looking at, it will save me time. Like, I was like, oh, I'll just take the elements from that curb stone, <laughs> laid it out and went, oh, it looks like a science cell. It looks like this should be some, in some sort of science book with, you know, labels and it's a diagram. So, bink, uh, nope, won't be doing that. Um, but this also allows me to test techniques. Um, even though it's on paper, um, you can still test out various and sundry techniques and it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. All right, um, I hope that helps you kind of understand um, different ways and that artists function, um, different ways that you can function, because you can do this too. This is not just a um, something for artists only. Um, when you're wanting to draw something, paint something, work on something, you too can do this. Um, just remember that if you're not going from an original source, such as, okay, so this is a primary source, so let's go back into, okay, so I'm a former language arts teacher, so this, this is a primary source. This is a replica of a page from the Book of Kells. If I am pulling my imagery straight from here, I'm golden, right? It's a primary source. If, however, I am going to pull something from somebody else's work, let me switch this out, where they have done the design work, like y'all, I cannot believe that I was sitting here looking at that going, oh wow, yeah, I love that. Wait a second. Okay, notice how here they've actually identified, oh, except I've got it upside down again, y'all. Seriously, I'm going to have to figure out a better thing that I can do for my camera. Um, it is actually telling me where this is. Because they're telling me where this is, this is just a cleaned up version from the Book of Kells. Okay, I am not taking their design. If, however, I were to come in, and here's, here's an example. If I were to come in and just, boop, I'm going to use that. Thanks so much. Okay. Now, they've indicated that this is also, okay, opposite page, center medallion, boop, hold on, boop, 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 center medallion, from the Book of Kells, okay? While the maze motif is common to many cultures, this systematically diagonal um, remnant is uniquely Celtic, okay? So they are, but they have variations. She has things in here that are her design, okay? This is her work. That is not something that you get to capture and take. Like she's done a great job. This is a great book, by the way, if you're interested in Celtic art and gives you even like ideas of how to actually draw um, some of them because like all the animal stuff is in here. But she has taken things from straight from the carpet pages within the Book of Kells. And guys, again, you have to be very, very mindful and very careful. This is this person's work. They have created this. It is not mine to take and use. This is a secondary source, okay? This belongs to somebody else. I cannot use this. Um, the only reason that I feel comfortable in using some of them is use, in using this as a base and I, there's some things in here that I'm going to even leave out because I don't need or necessarily want. I want to highlight something else in here. Um, is this is a direct image and I found the primary source. Okay, I have the primary source and then I have her version where she's gone in and cleaned up that primary source. Um, but I have some pieces here that I want to remove. I don't, I don't want. Um, 
which is fine. That's part of my license. I can look at that and use that from the primary source. But I want you to be, understand that the same thing is true in writing. Um, you have to quote, right, the person that whose image, you know, whose words you are using. Uh, in art, you can't just go around taking other people's images and using them and calling them your own. Um, that is stealing. And we do not do that here. I do not encourage anybody to do that. I don't want you to do that. Um, I want you to be able to develop and define your own unique style. Um, so again, I hope you find this helpful um, in terms of how to develop ideas, how to utilize primary sources in order to develop sketches, in order to develop um, an image. Here, let me turn this over. In order to take a sketch from a primary source and use that to perhaps develop. Because see, like I really like that section right there, which you can't see because it's too far away. There you go. There's no zoom on this. That is one downside is that I don't have really a zoom function. I can basically move my camera closer. Um, like I like this portion right here of this design. Um, I really love the spiral component. You see it in lots and lots of Celtic work. Um, and I want to bring that into the foreground. But this curbstone is amazing because it's a calendar. It's all about the things of the year. Um, it, so it's a calendar year. It's really fascinating. Um, and I can then take and incorporate that, just that one section. And it's based off of that curbstone. So I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to being able to see when I'm ready to actually transfer one of these onto a canvas and get started painting. Alright, see you soon.